I'm seeing another day closer to my dream, which is, right, as I just said, there's nowhere, like, I would rather fight him on Saturday night in Madison Square Garden than do anything else in the world. I absolutely love this, I absolutely love this sport. He's the most dangerous guy in the UFC, and I'm completely aware of that, and it, it just takes one shot, and I believe that I can land it. Well, well, well. Didn't expect to be having this conversation in New York, did we, Sunshine, eh? Absolutely not. But here we are. Tom Aspinall, welcome back to TNT Sports. Thank you. Um, I don't know really where to start with this, because a couple of weeks ago, I felt your frustration. Obviously, you're in great nick now. Mm. Injury's done. You've had a limited amount of octagon time this year, and I felt that when we were chatting in your gym, that you were frustrated about not having a date, not having a purpose, not having something to work, work towards. When the call comes in, what's the mindset? Well, <laughs> that's gone, hasn't it? It stuck it right <laughs> on my toes there. Um, <laughs> do you know what? I got the call early in the morning, so I was sleeping. And it was off someone really high up in the UFC, not Dana White, but someone really high up who's never called me before. And I could hear my phone vibrating at the side of me, like this. And I was like, that's weird, someone ringing me at that time. So I picked, picked it up, and as I picked it up, I seen the person's name, and then it went off. You know, like it stopped ringing. I thought, right, we're just going to go back to sleep. It's like 6 a.m., I've got a few hours. And then obviously my mind just starts going... And as soon as my mind started going, I was like, someone's pulling out of New York here. I just knew it straight away. So I rung him back and he said, listen, I'm not going to tell you what's happened because it's not for sure yet. Mm. I'm going to let you know in the next 24 hours. And I was supposed to be going on holiday the next day. So I said, listen, you're going to have to let me know because I'm going on holiday. <laughs> I'm going away tomorrow. Anyway, he rung me back at 4 a.m. the following night and uh, he told me what's going on. He said, John Jones is injured. Stipe doesn't want to fight anybody else apart from John Jones. So... You and, uh, you and Big Pavers on uh, MSG, and I said, I'm in. Regarding the, the year that you've spent out with injury, yep. and the work that you've done on yourself mentally, team-wise, do you think the old Tom Aspinall would have reacted differently? I would have never done this before. Absolutely not, absolutely not. Uh, it's just a testament to my training, I think. Like, um, I've got multiple guys now, like, where I train who are preparing for fights themselves. So obviously I've been in the gym helping out. We've got my teammate Mick Parkin fighting next week in Vegas. Um, so I was helping him out with the sparring. Uh, I was over in Holland training with Rico Verhoeven who's got a fight coming up. I was helping him out sparring. So I've done some sparring, do you know what I mean? Which mm. I wouldn't usually be doing. And yeah, my body's really, really in a good spot. Ideally, I'm not gonna like beat around the bush and like everybody. Um, I would have liked longer to train, of course. I would, like it's a world title fight, I would have loved 10 weeks, but um, we don't live in an ideal world. And as corny as it might sound, you've got to be in it to win it. And if I'm not here, I'm never going to win the title. So um, I'm going to be in there Saturday night. There's absolutely nowhere else in the world that I'd rather be than in there fighting on Saturday. And it may just take one shot, and I believe that I can land it. What, what so are you saying that the old Tom Aspinall yeah. Would have said no? The old Tom Aspinall would have definitely said no. 100%. Like, obviously, my body w wasn't in a good spot. Um, and also, my, my training is so good now that... Because I'm training with heavyweights all the time, like, every day. I know where I'm at. Whereas before, I was only training with heavyweights, like, every so often. So it was hard to kind of get a gauge of how fit I am, how strong I am. And now, like, I'm training with heavyweights every day, so... Yeah, I know exactly where I'm at at all times. I know if I'm fit enough, I know I'm ready to go. And um, my body and mind are in such a good spot right now, it'd just be silly to say no. Um, the king of the late replacement championship victory, Mr. Bispin. Yep. What's he said to you? Well, mate, I'm going full Bispin Saturday night. I'm going <laughs> all in. Uh, no, you know what? He actually gave me some great advice, you know. Usually me and Bispin, we're like on each other's case, you know winding each other up and whatnot. But he actually gave me some really, really good advice. And he's like, listen, this is not about two and a half weeks. Mm. I've been involved in martial arts since I was eight years old, I'm 30. He's like, this is about the last 20 plus years of your life. Um, it's not about a two week training camp or a six week training camp or a three month trip, whatever. Like you spent your life doing this, you've made loads of sacrifices for it. Like this is not about the last two weeks, this is about the last 20 years. So I think it was a really, really solid piece of advice. When, you, when you're going to sleep at night at the moment, yep. what are you seeing? I'm seeing another day closer to greatness, to be honest with you. I, I'm, I'm seeing another day 
closer to my dream, which is, like, as I just said, there's nowhere, like, I wouldn't, I would rather fight him on Saturday night in Madison Square Garden than do anything else in the world. I absolutely love this, I absolutely love this sport. I absolutely love this city, apparently. I didn't realise I did until I got here. Madison Square Garden is somewhere that I always wanted to fight, and I think he's the ideal dance partner for me. I absolutely love this fight. You're a student of heavyweight yep. martial arts, but you just mentioned the venue there. Yeah. And it's synonymous with some of the biggest heavyweight fights of all time. I know you've been in and had a little look around yep. this afternoon. What were your first impressions? I'm just excited to fight there. Like, that's a combat sports athlete's dream, in my opinion. It is my, definitely mine anyway. Um, yeah, I just can't wait to get in there. I just felt like so much energy from going in there today. Um, I love arenas though, you know, I think, because I, I spent like four fights fighting in the pandemic with nobody in it. Yeah. I just love the feel of like the, that arena feel and even with an empty arena, I can kind of like feel the energy of the place already. And yeah, I just can't wait for Saturday. What challenges does he bring? Um, he's got a lot of power, obviously. Um, I think something that his opponents miss off is he picks the right shots at the right times. He's not like, mate, I'm a heavyweight. We're all heavyweights. All of us have got power. All of us, like it takes one shot from any of us. Mm. But not everybody has the resume that he's got, which is a load of knockouts on the record because he just picks the right shots at the right moments. He's clever, he's clever with his attacks. He's dangerous, he puts a lot of forward pressure on. He's obviously a big and strong guy. Um, yeah, and he's just dangerous everywhere, I think. Regarding lifestyle and yeah. the changes and the attitude changes that you've made over the last year, for people that have not been paying full attention to that, there seems to be a common theme with a lot of athletes I've been speaking to today. Yiri was one of them, for example, yeah. about purely immersing yourself yeah. into martial arts. How, is, how difficult is that to do, being a northern lad, yeah, a good lad, loads of good mates that want obviously to spend spend time with you, yep. but to immerse yourself fully in mixed martial arts to try and achieve what you're trying to achieve. How difficult is that to do? Oh, it's definitely difficult. And to be honest with you, to be really honest, I had a lot of time to think over the injury and stuff. When I was injured, I was inactive. I couldn't even get in the gym for a, 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 a decent period of time. And obviously I was thinking about my mentality. If I want to carry on with this sport, how I'm going to move forward in my life, in the sport and everything. And I think that I was, I was lacking in confidence quite a bit. Because I would always like not give it a hundred percent outside the gym. I would always train hard and stuff, but I always like it was almost like I, I wanted a built-in excuse mm. to if it didn't go right. And I think that is testament to me not having enough confidence, me having too big of an ego at the time. And I always wanted to be like, well, if I wouldn't have done this, I would have won. If I if I would have done more of this, I would have won. And like when I came back, I didn't want. I have any excuses. What changed? Did you, did you have a conversation with someone? You know, I had a lot what was of conversations it? with a lot of different people. Uh, mainly my dad. I think he definitely said that I need to change some stuff in my training, 100%. And I knew that anyway. But when everything's going good, you yeah. don't want to start changing stuff. Um, I knew that a lot of stuff that I weren't doing outside the gym weren't working for me. My diet wasn't great and stuff like that. I wasn't doing any strength and conditioning. Um, I didn't recover, I wasn't stretching, I wasn't sleeping right. I just weren't living the life, mate, of, a, of the best in the world. And now I am, regardless of if I've got a fight or not. So um, no matter what happens on Saturday night, no matter, no matter what happens moving forward from here, I'm always gonna be proud of myself because I give it my best go. Whereas before, I wasn't doing that. I, was, I like had a built-in excuse of, what's going to happen if it doesn't go right and now like literally in, in 20 years whenever I finish this sport oh well, <laughs> hopefully before that in 10 years when I finished <laughs> I hope I'm not sorry anyone at 50 but uh I can look back and go listen no matter what happened I give it my best go there and I'll be proud of myself no matter what because I've given it my best and that's all that anyone can do how does this play out Saturday oh this plays out with a massive knockout and my hand getting raised yeah I think uh, a finish is inevitable on either side. It's heavyweight MMA. We're talking about two of the most dangerous guys in the UFC. Um, I've got the shortest fight time average in the UFC. He's got the second shortest fight time average, which is absolutely insane. Uh, we're all got, we've both got 100% finish rate, which is, again is absolutely insane. We're both absolutely massive guys, really dangerous from every position. Um, but I think it comes down to fight IQ. And I think mine's better. Is this 
when you look at the whole division, yeah. is this the most dangerous fight? 100. This is the most dangerous fight for anybody in the UFC, in my opinion. He's the most dangerous guy in the UFC. And I'm completely aware of that. I'm completely aware that um, I came in in the worst circumstances possible. But I obviously think I'm going to win. Otherwise, I wouldn't have signed the contract. How many people from Everton are coming over? Oh, I've got a lot of people coming. I've got 100 people <laughs> has the, coming. Has the, has the phone been lit up? The phone's been lit up, but you know what? I've got such a good group of people around me that they know not to light my phone up too much. So the phone's been off for a lot of time. I've been staying off social media. Yeah. I'm I like not, that. I I'm like not, that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not interested in, in reading comments negative or positive. I, I just want to be distance myself from that and just believe in myself and believe what I can do. And I don't need other people's opinions, mate, to know that I can win the title. Did you just say 100 people coming over? 100 people are coming on, over, yeah. On two and a bit weeks notice? Near, near enough 100 people are coming over, yeah. It's absolutely wild. I can't believe it. I can't believe people can afford it. I can't believe people want to travel across the world like that on the drop of a hat. It's absolutely insane. Pretty decent place to come. Oh, it's a nice fight, place, though. mate. It's really nice. <laughs> Listen, mate. I'm di everybody's obviously behind you in the UK. We wish you all the very best. Have a wonderful week. And who knows, Sunday morning, there might be a third from the UK with a world title from the UFC. Thank you. I think so. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Man.